What's going on YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Money Moves with Kay. I'm Kay, and today we're gonna to talk about the unexpected expenses that no one talks about when you're building a new construction. If there's something that you're interested in, please stay tuned for the video. All right, so for all the new folks who are watching the video, my family and I are constructing an Airbnb business from scratch. If you're interested in following our journey from the very beginning, I'll have some links below to other videos I've done thus far to kind of show you where we are and the progress we're making. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and get into the video. So number five, the fifth unexpected expense that my family and I encountered thus far in our process, and mind you, we have not even started to build the property yet. We start next month. But just to give you a heads up, there are two closings, typically, not all the time, but typically there are two closings with a new construction property. The two closings are comprised of the construction phase and also the permanent phase. So the construction loan is basically where um, they're constructing the property. And because of that, you have to actually close on that portion of the loan. Fast forward, once, you, once the uh, home is complete, you actually have to uh, close on the permanent phase, which is where you have your more traditional aspect of the loan, which you and I are considered to uh, know about, which is uh, the mortgage, your monthly mortgage, where you have PITI, right? So um, keep that in mind when you are trying to think about the expenses that kind of occur and you don't really think about them at the moment, but they're there, okay? So having the money up front and on the back end, uh, knowing that there would be potentially two closings uh, with the new construction loan, uh, keep that in mind as you go through this process because it did bite us in the butt. We have the money to spend on it, but we just didn't know. We just thought it was one closing because we have pre-existing homes that we purchased and there were no two closings. It's just one close, you're one and done, and uh, it's a wrap. If you're interested in more information on this phase of construction to permanent loan closings, I actually did a video. I'll link that below as well. So please give that a, uh, please check that out as well. The second unexpected expense that we really didn't predict is having interest only payments until the property is finished and we turn over into the permanent phase of our loan, right? So until the loan is actually permanent, we actually have to pay every single month interest only payments. All right, even if there's no property there. So once we close on the construction phase of the property, um, we have uh, interest only payments. Now, mind you, we don't actually build until next month, right? So there's just literally land right there at the moment. So we had to already pay two months worth of interest only payments. Now those payments, because there is no home there just yet, those payments are not expensive. I think we paid $120 uh, each time of those payments, but still keep that in mind. That's an unexpected expense that before the process, we didn't know anything about. We just thought, okay, we'll just build. But uh, oh no, you have to pay interest only payments until you are, are done and complete and you have your permanent loan uh, phase already completed. The third unexpected expense that actually just happened to us last week is water and sanitary sewer connection fees. Very simply, water and sanitary sewer connection fees basically means water and sewer, right? So how are you going to have water and sewer on your property? And for us, because we're in the city and our land is in a, in a city area, um, we had to pay for, uh, and most people do have to pay for a connection fee. All that basically means is that you're activating them to come out to your property and set everything up. That fee typically, and this is for my area, your area may be a lot different, maybe more expensive or less expensive. I don't know, but I'm just kind of giving you guys my experience. For our area, it's between $1,000 and $3,800 just to connect, just to activate the account. So the total cost of us tapping into the line and to have water and sewer to our property is $13,000, a whopping $13,000. I said again, $13,000, that's crazy, right? So that is an expense that we didn't expect. However, when you do a new construction, they do provide those things, those expenses into your allowances. And for us, it was already put into place in our allowances. But here's the kicker. Here's where it kind of gets tricky is because our subdivision never had those mechanisms in place for us to tap into the water line and kind of get started as soon as possible, we actually don't have to do a connection fee of $1,000 to $3,800. We actually have to do a connection fee of $13,000. So that's a huge difference. Now, 
Luckily, prayerfully, thank you, Jesus, we were able to talk to our builders and they pretty much said they would cover the cost up front and just get that money back when the allowance is kicked in, once the actual loan closed um, later on. So we're good there and we don't have to pay a connection fee. So that's the bright side of the situation. But my point is that that's a lot of money. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about where you're located. And this is another thing. We wouldn't be able to know that that unless you know otherwise. And if you do, please put it down in the comments so I know next time, right? But we didn't know. We've had a title search. We've had a survey. We've had all types of things at the property. And there's no way that, to my understanding, that we would have known that we couldn't tap into the, the main line of the utility company unless we had an engineer come out to the property. Now, that engineer only came out to the property when we had an actual address. So that would mean that we have to actually purchase the land, go to zoning, get an address, and then the engineers say, okay, guys, we'll come out to your property and assess your lines and assess what we would need to do here in order for you to connect to water and sewer. So that's a lesson learned for us. And um, hopefully we can do some things a little bit differently next time. But yeah, that would have been a lot of money, whether it been a connection fee or just the actual um, 13K. Um, yeah, that's a lot of money. So keep that in mind is you gotta have money, essentially for us to make money. If you're finding value in this video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, and share the video with someone else. It helps my video get out to a wider audience and allows me to help more people. So thank you so much and back to the video. The fourth unexpected expense that you need to watch out for is the appraisal, inspection, survey, and any other miscellaneous expense that comes with building a new construction home. So a lot of times, a lot of people may not understand that you do have to pay the appraisal out of pocket typically, unless you can wrap it into your loan somehow, um, which for us, the appraisal typically costs about $500. It's, it was actually $525 to be exact. Uh, for us, the inspection will cost about $500-ish around that amount. And the actual um, survey of your land will actually depend on the amount of land that you have. So the acreage in which you have, will vary in which that would take them more time to complete your survey in which you would have to pay more money for the survey. So that varies. And also the prices and rates vary depending on where you are located. But for us, that was kind of out of pocket and something that a lot of people may not take into account when they're trying to build a property from scratch. Please be sure to check out my appraisal video in which I give you five tips on how to really get a good appraisal and to meet the mark so that you can proceed with your new construction property. So check that out in the link below. So the fifth unexpected uh, expense that we did not take into account is making a last minute change to our plans. So we actually submitted all of our floor plans and everything was good to go and they were in the process of ordering it. We actually did this change before they started ordering, but we said, oh no, we need to add a mini split to the guest house versus having everything combined in one system so that the guests or the Airbnb guests could control the heating and air. Now with that change meant that there was an additional $500 that was added because we had tagged on that change after we had already submitted our floor plans. Now that could be different per builder. That's our particular builder's policy. Um, because they kind of don't want to, you know, have too many changes being made. And uh, we learned a lesson from that. So that was kind of unexpected and uh, we won't do that again. But please keep in mind all the things that I've kind of discussed in this video because they all happen unexpectedly and they all kind of add up, right? So make sure you have enough money in your budget, savings and every other thing uh, to cover these unexpected expenses. That is the end of my video. Thank you so, so very much for watching until this point. I appreciate it. And until next time, you guys stay blessed. Peace.